In this video trade, we're gonna look at, can you repair a losing trade? Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. So, is it possible to repair a losing trade, i.e. a trade that's gone against you? Can you do something about it to kind of make the damage much less? Well, it turns out you actually can, and there are a couple of ways that you can do this. Now, the first kind of way that most people try to repair a trade is the classic double down. Now, doubling down really isn't a great strategy because ultimately, you know, the more the market is going against you, if you're doubling down and doubling down and doubling down, yes, okay, your break even now becomes low. If you buy 5,000 shares here and then 5,000 shares there, your break even suddenly becomes in the midway between the two, and that's okay, but your risk has now doubled. So if the price goes continually against you, you can potentially get hammered. And if you're doubling down, doubling down, that's many an account killer. So we don't want to do that. That's why I put that X there. We don't want to be doubling down unless, of course, it's part of a strategy that we've planned out beforehand. So we said, you know what, we're buying here. We're going to add some more here. We're going to add some more here. And the important thing is that we've said to ourselves, right, the last time we add is here. So the total risk on the deal is here. This is where we come out. So this is my maximum risk on the trade. As long as we've done that, then that's fine. But for most people, we don't do that. We're looking at not doubling down because it, okay, it can seem tempting. You know, we've probably all done it at some point. We've done, you know what, if I just add here, it seems low. All we've got to do is pop back up and I'm out of break even. I can move on. Yes, it's tempting, but it's generally so, so risky. The other one is H&H, &H, which is hold and hope. That's not where your strategy, guys, is that we don't want to do that. But many people do do that and they hope that's going to repair the losing trade. However, there is a third option, pun intended, and it's an option trade. Now, we can trade options on indices, we can trade options on currencies, we can trade options on equities, commodities, anything that is optionable, we can do this trade on. So let's look at an example and let's look at some kind of hypothetical numbers to give you a kind of overview of how this would work in the real world. So let's say, for example, now we're going long XYZ stock at $90 per share. I'm going to use an equity as an example because I think it's easier to kind of understand. And we've got 500 shares. So we're a position of $45,000 equity up front for that. Forget about margin for now. Um, now, for whatever reason, the price of the share is $50 a share. So pretty big hit. We've lost $20,000 on that so far if we were to crystallize that loss and, and sell those shares. We lost $40 per share times of 500. We're down $20,000. Okay, now we don't think that that share price is going to go back up to $90. We think that's a bit of a tall order. Um, and so what we do is we say, okay, I'm going to construct an option trade, which will reduce my break even, but cap my upside in exchange for that. And let's see how that works. So what we could do is we could buy or go long five, which is 500 shares worth of the $50 calls. So that's the current price that's at the money. And then we could sell 10 of the $70 calls, so they're out of the money. Now, if you've looked at the, if you watch some of my option series, you'll see, notice that if we're selling calls and they're out of the money, we're collecting the premium. So we're actually making money on that. So we're basically the other side of the contract, the, the right and the obligation to buy uh, $70, uh, XYZ stock at $70. And let's say we didn't have the expiry here, guys. Let's say we've got a December expiry, okay? Um, so we're on the other side of that. So we collect that premium. We collect the money that someone's paid for that contract, assuming, and then assuming that they expire worth it, so we get to keep that premium. Okay, so we're kind of constructing this, this trade now. So we're making some money, hopefully net on this deal. Now the break even now for the whole thing becomes, uh, including the stock trade, becomes $70 because what we're doing is we are and allowing us to collect this premium from this seventy dollars. We're going to make some money from these fifty dollar calls, twenty dollars in fact, and we're going to make some money back on this. But let me look at some examples. This is some, some actual examples here: fifty dollars, sixty dollars, and seventy dollars to see exactly what would happen, and hopefully we can work out in our head how that would affect the bottom line. Right. So let's say the actual stock price doesn't do anything, it stays at $50. What actually happens? Okay, so we've still got that $20,000 loss. That stays exactly as it was, not great. 
However, we get to keep the premium from these $70 calls. Yes, we've paid out for five of these $50 calls, but because we've sold 10 of the $70 calls, yes, they're gonna be cheaper than the $50 calls because 70 is gonna be out of the money, so it's gonna be cheaper. But because we've sold 10 of them, we're gonna have made some money from this kind of option spread, if you like, and that's gonna have offset some of the damage from the 20,000. So we'd be better off if we hadn't done that trade at all at $50. Okay, what about the uh, $60 expiry? So this is all expiry, by the way. So when we get to December, this is the price at, at the expiry. We'll talk about in a second if we could do anything with this before the expiry. So at expiry now, we're, we're at $60. So what happens? Well, we've, we've made a little bit back on, on the stock trade, right? With $50, has gone to $60. So we're already down uh, $30 on the trade there. Uh, which is a little bit more manageable. Um, and the 50 calls are now worth $10 as well. So that's looking better. So not only are we only down uh, $30 on that, we've made $10 on that. So we're $20 net, which is okay. So that's that's almost like we were doubling up. But don't forget, we're not actually putting capital down for this. We're only paying for the price of the calls. We're not putting down the full uh, allocated capital. The 70 calls uh, expire worthless because the right to buy something at uh, 70 that's currently 60 is worthless. So we get to keep the premium from that. So we get an additional, if we hadn't done a repair on the trade, uh, we get to keep an additional $10, which is the 60 minus the 50 on those calls, the 500 shares, which is nice. Plus the premium for those calls expiring worthless. That's pretty good. Uh, you know, and we can almost disregard that because that the, the profit or the, the additional uh, gain would be the same on that if we hadn't done the repair. But with the repair, you can see that we've made uh, some money on this. Now, what about if it goes to 70? Well, 70 is almost the best case scenario for us, uh, depending on how we're looking at this. But $70, our $50 calls uh, are now worth $20, okay, because we've bought those and we can, uh, we can um, exercise those and make $20 on those, that's great. And we've got five of those. The $70 calls uh, expire worthless, but because uh, we are selling the call option, someone's got the right to buy at 70, we're going to offset the shares that we've bought. So we'll have to use those shares to give to the person who's exercising the call option, or it's gonna offset it anyway. At that 70 point, you know, the actual allocation of shares will go to the person who has that call option. So that kind of gets rid of that. But you can see we've made $20 on that. We've lost $20 uh, in total on that. Plus we've got to keep the premium um, from the uh, the call options, even though they're expiring, even if it's expiring, at the money, we're still collecting that premium. So we're actually slightly better off. Our break even's come lower, and you can see that in reality, if we hadn't done that repair trade, it would have to have gone to ninety, back to ninety to make that. Okay. But what happens if we go even higher? Let's say if we go to $90. So if we go to $90, yes, that's great. Uh, these call options here are going to be worth $40, but. The only downside that we have with this now is that this, uh, these selling of the calls are now cancelling out um, some of these uh, shares on here because we've gone, in fact, that we're gonna be you know, losing more money because we've sold 10 of these calls, which is a thousand shares. You know, we're going to have to uh, give 500 shares back to the person who has this, that offsets that, but we're also gonna be losing money on those 500 shares there. So anything we gain above 70, uh, with the uh, 50 calls, we're going to be losing with the set five of the 70 calls we sold. So it basically 70, anything above 70, we're not making any more money because the whole thing's negated. So you can see that we're basically offsetting the fact that this thing could go to the moon by bringing and lowering our strike price down or lowering our break-even price. Um, so that's something as a commercial decision that you have to say, well, I don't think the stock's going to go back to 90. That's what I'm going to do. However, one more thing to point out, guys, if this stock goes back to 70 much quicker than the December expiry, we are going to be able to adjust things as well to suit. So, you know, we might say that, OK, these may well be still have some premium left in them. So we're not going to get the full premium, but these will also have some extra premium into them if it's before December. So we might think, OK, we might make enough money on this to offset it and say, you know what, I'll close the option spread, take my money from that, use that to offset that close the whole deal, or perhaps I'll keep some of these shares. You know, you've got flexibility there. This allows you to, to, to kind of, you know, benefit from foot upside if it comes, caps your downside a little bit. Um, it's, a, it's a good commercial strategy, depending on what you think is gonna happen. Now, 
we haven't really addressed the point of, hey, you might not even want to repair it. The stock might go to there. You might want to crystallize that loss, move on and go into something else, which is you know a strategy in itself. But if you do think there is some mileage to it popping back up, you think the worst is over at $50. You don't think it's going to go back to 90, but you think 70 is feasible. Constructing something like this, as you can see, gives you a decent chance of getting money back, if you like, um, and, and but you're offsetting the fact that this thing could go to the moon and you're not going to be involved in it. All right, guys, uh, that is repairing a losing trade. See you next one. Take care. Bye bye.